Okay, everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Mike Bradley. I wanted to uh, welcome you to today's webinar on Oracle's Unified Customer Experience powered by DevGrew and Relationship One. Uh, we're pleased to be joined by Ron Corbisher from Relationship One and Michael Blumenfeld from DevGrew, who will take you through the presentation and live demos. Uh, we've budgeted plenty of time to allow for questions. We ask that you mute your line. It should already be muted, but just in case, uh, during the presentation, and please put the questions in the chat. Uh, we'll try to get to those as soon as the uh, presentation is done. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Ron from Relationship One. Hey, everyone. Uh, oh, sorry, go for it, Ron. No, go ahead, Michael. So hey, everyone. My name is Michael Blumenfeld. I'm the, the founder and CEO of DevGrew. We are one of uh, Oracle's preferred partners specializing in conversion rate optimization, website testing, and personalization. And uh, really looking forward to presenting uh, all this great content with you today and um, being joined by uh, Ron Corbiser, the CEO of Relationship One, who I'm going to pass it over to for introductions and to kick things off. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, again, Ron Corbisor with Relationship One. For those that don't know who Relationship One are, we uh, we have been around for quite a while. Uh, Eloqua partner that really focuses on implementing Oracle Marketing Cloud, which is all of the pieces. So you know, we're going to be focusing on Eloqua and Infinity and Maximizer today, but obviously we're with the other tools like the DMP, Lukai, and Responses and CX Content as well. Um, yeah. So today's discussion is really going to be focusing on how can you leverage Eloqua with some of the other tools within uh, CX marketing, specifically Infinity and with Maximizer? Um, so today, from an agenda standpoint, <clears throat> we're gonna start with Infinity. And for those that don't know what Infinity is, just have a really quick high level crash course in what is Infinity, what does it do? And then we'll put it in context of how do you use like Eloqua Infinity together? What are some of the common use cases? We'll actually go into the, the platform itself and do some quick demos on it um, and focus on those two tools working in tandem. Um, then Michael will take it over and talk basically the same thing, but we'll then we'll cover Maximizer. So kind of a high level overview of what is Oracle Maximizer and how does Eloqua and Maximizer work together and then if you have all three of those pieces working together, what does that world kind of look like? Um, so, you know, it, um, again, question wise, if you've got questions along the way, put those in the chat, we'll pick those up. We have more than enough time at the end to, to answer any questions you might have uh, throughout the course of the discussion. Um, so, I'm assuming everyone on the call is really familiar with what is Eloqua, but just you know, as a reminder, when we think of obviously Oracle Eloqua, we've got a best in class marketing automation tool and lots of functionality within uh, the Eloqua platform. But, you know, for our discussion, you know, we're going to kind of focus on key areas, right? One big thing is obviously uh, Eloqua from an orchestration standpoint is a really robust orchestration campaign management orchestration tool. Um, obviously, there's tools and channels uh, with inside the platform, emails and landing pages and forms and all of that. Uh, but you can extend outside of that into other channels as well. So we're going to show uh, in real time what that kind of looks like. Um, clearly, we've got a, a, you know, a really robust lead management tool as part of Eloqua. And that's everything from lead capture, uh, the scoring engine, uh, routing capabilities, uh, you know, data cleansing tools, all of that within the program canvas. Uh, so lead management clearly is a big component of it. Um, Eloqua obviously is very flexible. So as I mentioned, it's a very open platform. So it allows us to build connections to other systems, other channels very easily. Um, and then, you know, clearly from a marketing standpoint, it allows us to really uh, define clear targets and segments that we want to orchestrate against. So these four areas are something that will come up as part of our discussion today with respect to Oracle Infinity as well as Oracle and Maximizer. So what is Oracle Infinity? So Infinity is really two main parts, if you will. And I, I'm putting it this way because from a licensing standpoint, it's kind of two different licenses. You may have one uh, or the other or both of them together. It just kind of depends on your business use cases. One core component of, of Infinity is analytics. 
So very much an enterprise analytic solution that allows us to um, stream in data from multiple sources, have a unified view of that, build our own custom dashboards and reports um, on top of that uh, analytics architecture. Uh, we're gonna focus a little bit on analytics today, but most of the time we're gonna be talking about the second half of Infinity, which is really the data activation. And data activation is again, um, taking that live streaming signal type data, right? Data that might be coming from a website, might be coming from uh, display advertising, from backend systems, from, uh, you know, APIs call, calls coming in from a point of sale system or whatever it might be, but that live data that streams into the platform, all those signals coming in, um, it enriches that data with additional information, demographic and, and uh, geo uh, and tech data, uh, especially for visitor information. And we take that and actually turn that into marketing actions. So the bulk of what our conversation today is gonna be on how do we do that? What does that look like? So activation. So when we think about infinity and data activation with infinity, kind of broken down into some core components, right? One part is streams. So again, streams is that real time event data that's coming into the platform that we can use and then query that to turn that into an action. So the action center then allows us to take again that stream and do something with it. And I'll give some use cases about that in just a sec. Um, and then the other piece that is part of data activation that we think about um, not really relevant for everyone, but if you're a large enterprise and you've got a big data warehousing environment, you can actually take that live stream data that's flowing into Infinity and turn around, there's an Infinity data connector that allows us to take that high volume of data and deliver that back into your data warehouse because you might use that for other purposes downstream. The bulk of our conversation today is gonna be around that streams and action center part. Okay. So infinity um, streams. So streams again is within the tool, we can capture um, any online activity event that happens. So you know it's no sampling, it's raw data coming into the platform, every click, every view, scroll information, uh, what you're hovering on, uh, clicking of videos, how far in a video, the content that you're consuming, all of that data comes in in real time, unsampled. Um, on the fly, that data is enriched. So uh, Infinity automatically appends, you know, visitor location information, device and browser information, uh, reference, referral data, demographic data. There's a bunch of different things that are already uh, appended in real time as those streams come into Infinity, as that data, as those signals come into Infinity. We can filter that data. We can apply some query logic on that data to see what we're interested in. I'll show you that within the tool here in just a minute. Um, and then the other thing, thing is we're not just limited to data from a website. It's data that we can come in through a pixel, obviously the website, and then there's a data collection API that allows us to uh, push data into Infinity in real time for basically any backend system. So that might be, again, it may be a CRM system, maybe as a result of something closing or a process happening or something happening with a CRM or backend system. It could be a point of sale system. Uh, banking, we use an example a lot of times of the fact that you did a transaction within an ATM terminal, right? Or uh, at the counter or something like that. Again, that's another signal that we might wanna come in and marketing might wanna leverage the fact that you've done this event as part of that. So the streams engine allows us to see that data live, real-time, unsampled. Once we have that data coming in, we can turn it into action. So in this case, we want to um, look for certain types of conditions being met. And as a result of that, we wanna create an action to send that data to Eloqua for orchestration. We may also wanna send that data to other systems, right? We're not just limited to Eloqua. So Infinity Actions, um, comes with a number of pre-built connectors. There's obviously Eloqua and Responsus and Maximizer, kind of standard connectors that we normally use. But there's a universal connector as well. So we can send all of that data to any place with, uh, from an SFT to an SFTP to be used for any system, or you can even fire um, you know, web books, which are kind of really thin, quick uh, web calls out to an external system. 
again, we can customize when we should do that. So the queries of what we want to, the conditions essentially of when that should happen. Um, that's all customizable. And there's a bunch of pre-built uh, queries, which I'll show you within the tool for different types of use cases, uh, just to get you started. Again, this is live data. So as new data elements come in, Infinity automatically parameterizes those data, those data elements uh, that can be used within streams and then obviously in the Action Center. Um, but there's over a couple hundred different pre-configured parameters, you know, everything from your typical visitor activity stuff to more heat map things like scrolling, percent of screen scroll and all of that. Those are all standard things already built into the platform. Um, again, we're not going to spend too much time on it, but the analytics piece. So if you do happen to have Infinity Analytics, all of that raw data that comes into the platform from those different channels, those different event fires are then available to be seen. When we think of streams, it's real time. When we think of analytics, we can look at that data real time or historically. So we can build on top of that, all that uh, real time unsampled data are reporting. So there's already pre-built reports within the system. You can build your own custom reports and dashboards. You can build your own funnels if you want to kind of look at search funnels or uh, product transaction purchase cart kind of funnels. That's all built into the tool. Um, again, it really gives us kind of a cross-channel view of from all different types of marketing activities or starting points, how does that all tie together uh, from a user journey perspective and ultimately, again, going back in time to see how that happens. Um, so the analytics piece uses all that raw data, uh, and that's an option that we can use to, again, push based on a historical event, also use that to push it into um, the Action Center, something like uh, orchestrating, again, back downstream into Eloqua. OK, so let's talk about a couple different uh, use cases with respect to um, Eloqua, Oracle uh, Infinity along with Oracle Eloqua, and how does it really work, right? So again, those three kind of components. The first is the streams component, that live real-time signaling event. When we think about Eloqua today, a lot of things in Eloqua, you know, we have robust segmentation tools, but a lot of things are very kind of binary, right? The fact that, you know, did you visit a web page or not, or did you visit a web page so many times or not with a, a particular time frame? Did you fill out a form or not? Did you open an email or not? Did you click a link or not? It's, it's kind of like a yes, no type thing for a lot of our decisions. It's great, but we might want to actually go past those kind of yes, no conditions because in reality, users don't take, you know, linear paths to things. They're all over the place, right? So streams allow us to connect the, uh, those different event points along that journey. So the fact that someone uh, maybe is part of an email campaign, goes to our website, um, starts looking at different content, eventually comes back, fills out a form, might download something. So we can all see all of those connections together as a unified flow. And at any moment in time, we can choose to move them through the orchestration pathway or make changes to how we would communicate with them on what platform or what channel as a result of their actual behavior. So the Action Center allows us to take all of that data and you know, look for a particular pattern uh, and then raise that up and send that over to Eloqua for, again, maybe changing of, of orchestration pathway, maybe enriching data about the individual um, so for better targeting. So inside of Eloqua, there's actually an app, an Oracle Infinity app that you install inside of Eloqua. And that's where we pump data into, or that's where we add someone. There's a feeder on the Eloqua Canvas that allows us to drop someone into either Campaign Canvas or Program Canvas that allows us to orchestrate or to append data or whatever it might be. So it's those three pieces coming together that really make um, this work. So from a use case perspective, I'll give a couple examples of use cases, and then I'll go into the tools so we spend some time actually looking at it. Um, so one example that's pretty common is you know, high-valued content. The fact that somebody might be looking at a particular service area or clicked on a particular case study on the website, maybe there's video content as part of that overall case, uh, that case study. Um, and we want to know, you know, did someone consume maybe the, the two videos are there at least 50% of the, the, the content 
And then did they also look at a down, did they download any related case data or PDF or something? Uh, with Infinity, we can do that based on, you know, at the end of the session, check to see if this condition was met. And if so, then send that uh, record over to Eloqua because we want to orchestrate or uh, do something with that individual. Um, or we can do it actually as it's happening. So we can do it both on session in real time or as it closes. So pretty typical use case. Again, a little harder to do that with our standard Eloqua approach, but as we are seeing these live signals, we can uh, get very complex in our query logic. Another example would be site search. So the fact that I'm on the site, I'm searching for certain types of terms. Uh, maybe I come to a service or product area. I actually scroll through at least 75% of that page to consume that content. I download a related case study. Um, but, you know, I'm really focused on that product and I seem not to click on any of my other products or services areas. So that gives me a really big clue as to if I want to personalize content or drop someone into a nurturing track around a specific product family or product of interest, um, their user behavior uh, in this fashion tells me that. I could use site search to do that. I could use paid search or display advertising as an entry point to do that. I could use organic search to do that. Obviously, obviously things like organic search uh, and paid search, Google, for example, obviously we don't get the search term any longer that they're sending over, but we do know that it came from a Google referral that started the process, started that particular session. So we can use that as part of our query um, to flow them into Eloqua. Another example that uh, we have as marketers all the time, someone's looking at our site, consuming content, they start clicking into a, a lead form uh, and halfway through it, they abandon it and you know they don't actually submit, uh, click the submit button. Again, with Infinity, we can be capturing every piece of information as they go from field to field to field and send that through. And if we want to do that either in real time or at the end of the session, we can append that data onto their record with inside of Eloqua and again, use that information for better targeting, personalization, better orchestrations downstream. So three different kind of approaches of use cases. I'm gonna pluck a couple of those out and just do a quick demo of what this actually looks like. So here I'm in um, Infinity Streams. In this case, I'll use the example of uh, service content and maybe video, right? So we're kind of interested in that. So um, a stream is really straightforward. Again, it's, um, let's start up my stream here. All right, so um, up above here, the tool helps you actually build the query so you don't have to be super fancy on, on knowing what the queries are. But in this case, it's looking for, you know, the session in this case is not closed. If it was true, that meant the session, the browser session had to be closed. And I'm looking for anything where the content uh, kind of grouping of type of content is service related content. And um, I've got in Eloqua, a campaign that uh, is looking for somebody that is using, viewing service content on a fake website here, I'll show you in just a minute, uh, whether or not they've um, viewed a video content, at least 100% of the video content of the website, uh, of, the, of the video on that page. Uh, and there's a evaluation period here of seven days. This is just a shared list with inside of Eloqua to do that. Um, and then if they did, maybe I would drop them down some particular content nurture pathway. Uh, if they're not seeing interested, maybe I'll do a second uh, campaign email or something like that to get them interested. So I've got a very fictitious website here. So Olympic Martin Corporation, this is not a real company. So just to be really clear, but kind of looks like a real company. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and forth and switch screens here a little bit, but just to show you, if I go to just uh, refreshing my screen, um, what you'll start seeing, again, we've got Infinity over here running. I'm going to go to my services area, right? So this is services content. I can poke around in my services. And over in here in Infinity, you're actually going to start seeing, again, live data flowing in. The fact that I'm looking at different pieces of content, um, uh, 
subcontent around, you know, my, in this case, service offerings for this particular company. Um, and then if I scroll down, I've got video on this site. So I'm going to start my video. As I start my video, you're going to see my video element showing up here. I can go through, I can even, you know, I'll, I'll play around with uh, the audio on this as well, but I need to reach 100% of my video for this to fire off. So I'm gonna go come to the end. And as I'm doing that, over here, you're actually gonna see, you know, that I changed my volume. So I'm actually listening to the content. You'll see my percent of consumption um, of that content. Um, again, I stopped it before I hit the end. So let's go all the way to 100%. Okay. And then inside of Eloqua, as a result of that, if I refresh here, uh, the fact that I, you know, uh, viewed services content filled, uh, fed, uh, added me to the campaign via the feeder. Um, again, I've got a separate program here that is very, very simple. All it's looking for is, did I view the content to be 100%? And if so, add me to a shared list. And just for those folks that want to see if I'm being honest or not, right? Inside, I'm actually in that shared list, right? So now as a result, um, I go down the proper flow that I want within this particular pathway, right? I've just got a wait step in here for now just to show that, right? So very simple use case. It's just using a feeder based on the content I'm consuming and whether or not I viewed subcontent, in this case a video, up to a particular percentage of use, you can get granular to say only this video or only these videos. Again, really simple because you can build that type of query within the system. So one, one example there. Uh, another example I'm gonna use is just uh, more of a commerce-y kind of example. Again, this is just another you know, stream of information. I'll come back to my site here, I'll look at, um, some content to start firing it off. So you'll see <coughs> as a result of, of uh, once the page loads here, you'll see that start loading. Um, again, uh, if I scroll down into the system, you're going to start seeing other attributes showing up like uh, heat map data, the fact that I've got scroll depth or things like that, that shows up. I'm going to go to my store in this case, look at some products. Gonna add some product to my cart. Maybe add a couple things here as I do that. Okay, so I'll add this one. And all right, so as I'm doing that, what you're seeing over Infinity, you're gonna see that the product family the products that I'm looking at in this case, as I'm, it's catching up a little bit, but as I add things to my cart, you'll actually see that. I'm gonna go to my cart itself. I'll go through the checkout process here real quick. It's my information. I'll place my order, right? So I've got my order number, my total amount, that's a fake amount right uh, and then all of that data is being captured with inside of infinity and um, i turned off my messaging but we've got a campaign in eloqua as an example there it is so up here i've got a text message that's telling me right from eloqua personalized hey ron you know here's your order number and your uh, amount um, and that's just a really simple program inside of Eloqua again. All it's using is a feeder to look at uh, a purchase event in this case, but again, it could be anything else. Whether or not I have a mobile preference, in this case, I'm just using a mobile number, and if so, then send me a text message. So very quick and easy to set up those types of use cases. Again, I'm using an example using a commerce use case, but you can apply that in many different areas. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Michael to talk a little bit about uh, Eloqua and Maximizer. Thank you, Ron. Um, so hopefully everybody now can see my screen, which says, what is Oracle Maximizer? Um, so we're now going to um, 
kind of go from what we saw from marketing automation and real-time triggers to how do we now incorporate conversion rate optimization into that play. Maximizer is an optimization platform. It's best in class. It's built for the enterprise in terms of security and, and performance. And the reason I consider it an optimization platform is within the optimization umbrella, I do believe that there are two quote unquote sub segments underneath them. One is testing and the other is personalization. When you leverage this tool correctly, and you use the tool for testing and then subsequent personalization, it becomes less of a testing tool, less of a personalization engine, and it becomes more of a tool that is a business intelligence tool. It will generate actionable insight when used appropriately. So you have the ability to run tests, AB, multivariate, uh, predictive analytics, all that fun stuff across a number of different channels, including web, app, mobile, responsive websites, um, a number of different uh, uh, single page apps as well, a number of different areas. And the tool itself is, is really quite powerful in what it can do. So just to show you a little bit of, of you know, some of the highlights in, in our, my opinion, and I think Ron's opinion as well, is this, everything is built within this powerful WYSIWYG editor. Um, it is the most powerful tool or WYSIWYG editor, I should say, out in the marketplace in this area. And what it allows for people to do is it allows for easy collaboration between the marketer as well as the developer. And here's what I mean by that. A traditional marketer for, for today's conversation, today's webinar, we're just going to make the assumption that no marketer knows how to do any type of coding whatsoever. So what we know is the marketer is going to go in, they're going to start WYSIWYG editing, dragging and dropping different areas of the site to make sure that it's fully optimized to whatever they want it to accomplish. And at some point, they might need a developer to come in to code up a specific metric, a specific action. So what's going to happen is the, the marketer is going to leverage the WYSIWYG editor that you see right there on the screen. And what's really interesting is that once that person makes the change from a visual perspective, directly on the bottom of the screen there, you will see that it will actually update the code in real time. Subsequently, when they pass it off to the developer and the developer then decides to come in to do that really complex thing, they can use the, the, the code editor on the bottom and then it will automatically update the WYSIWYG editor in real time. Now, sure, you can do a tremendous amount um, with any WYSIWYG editor. This one, you will do the most that you can do. Everything from multi-page testing uh, to just simple form switches, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. But at the end of the day, this is the most powerful one out there. And just like any other, you know, sometimes you might need someone to help you come in and code up that really specific, well, how am I gonna capture the, the revenue amount? How am I gonna capture this lead capture? And, and that's how, you know, you could leverage someone to come in and, and collaborate with you. It also has uh, a component of it called Engage, which is really meant for behavioral targeting. So right out of the WYSIWYG editor, you will be able to actually throw up a light box onto the site for anybody who's coming in. Uh, you know, we know, hey, you know, if you're a customer, that when you reach the, the website or you reach the Eloqua landing page, we know you're a customer, boom, we can put you on with a, with a pop-up. If we know that you're a prospect, not a customer, we're going to give you a different type of message. And you can do this already pre-built in. You can modify them as you choose directly from the WYSIWYG editor. Now, if you take it one step further, just to give you a little sense and some foreshadowing uh, to what's coming towards the end of the presentation, but if you were to leverage Infinity Streams, which is again, that real-time retargeting, if we know that maybe somebody is going uh, to exit out or they're going to abandon, we can actually leverage streams in real time to trigger a, a light box that says, hey, you're about to abandon, hold on, what can we do to help you? So again, very powerful things directly out of the WYSIWYG editor. Another aspect of, of Maximizer is its brand new recommendations engine. You want to think about this just like if you were to go to Amazon, make a purchase for the, a baseball glove, and then on the bottom it'll say, those who purchased this glove also purchased this bat or these balls or this um, 
helmet, however you want to do it. This will actually, uh, the algorithm allow you to do the exact same thing. So what it will do is it will take about a week or so for the algorithm to learn. We will actually ingest all of your inventory files or any sort of, uh, for, you know, for B2B, if you have a, a number of different blog posts, we can ingest the blog. So that way when people are on a specific product page, it'll say, those who read this blog also like this blog. Uh, we can do a number of different algorithms that are built into it. So something that you can think of. And as you can see, it's all built in and access accessible, excuse me, directly from the WYSIWYG editor. So again, this really is your home base, not only for building out your campaigns, but also for uh, reviewing all the analytics, which we're going to show you later. One of my uh, all-time favorite aspects of, of this tool is the ability to do predictive analytics and predictive insights. Um, as many of you have as an adult, you sure had them as a little kid, which is, you know, very simple preferences for things. Uh, vanilla versus chocolate. Uh, cats versus dogs. There's no reason why as an adult that should be any different for you when you're actually going onto a website to do lead capture, to make a purchase, to buy a car, um, to look at, you know, a piece of construction equipment, you get the idea. Uh, if you really wanted to get very simplistic, I could pull the audience, which we're not going to do, so keep those answers to yourself, but who'd you vote for in the last election? I will bet that everybody has a different preference of where they align. Uh, and like I said, your web experience should be no different. So we have the ability within this tool to have Lee do two things. One, a listening campaign, which is what you're seeing, audience insights, which basically listens to everybody coming in to perform a specific action. So let's just say it's lead capture. And from there, who is outperforming that average and who's underperforming? And let's then dig deeper and create those sub-segments. The whole notion of one size fits all is a thing of the past. You need to be able to adapt to someone who's in London versus New York versus Minnesota versus Florida. You need to be able to adapt to customers versus prospects because you're only going to have one opportunity. And right now, we need to strike while the iron's hot. The other nice thing uh, um, that we, you know, we like to talk about is, is how Maximizer plays into marketing automation like Eloqua. We want to ensure that we can get all of our web data, our performance on the website to then travel into Eloqua. So that way you can leverage the builder and, and the canvas that you see on there to ensure that you are creating the right sales nurture program for your prospects and customers. So, Talking now about what are some of those joint use cases? Well, this is the, the very first one. This for me is kind of basic. This is 101. This is where you start when you have two tools like this. The first thing, and I was just having this conversation with Ron, which is Eloqua is a very, very powerful tool. For me, I like to consider it a very a high performance engine. But in order to make that engine go, you need fuel. And in, in this, for me, fuel is, is lead capture. It's what are you going to do with all those data collections that you're getting, the emails, the names, the addresses, so that way you can then nurture those individuals and eventually make that final sale. So first things first, what we want to do is we want to drive conversion. And most of the time for a B2B, it's going to be really one of two things. One, it's lead capture. Two, it's page engagement. So you'll notice here that we're going to send a ton of people into our website. We're going to run a bunch of experiments with our mad scientist beakers over there. And we're going to serve up different experiences based off of what people are coming in, what their preferences are, and what we're going to try and do. What are our objectives? Which content is most relevant? Which pages are needed to push a user down the, down, further down the journey? Uh, when do we show this content and who should we be showing this content to? And how do we figure all of that out? How do we make those testing objectives happen? Well, we want to try and figure out what engagement is correct. And, you know, you're going to see that in, in a little bit as well with, you know, when you send an eloquent email, are you sending someone uh, to a video, to an article, to a white paper they should download, or is it making an appointment to talk to a sales rep? Funnel analysis. Um, I have preached this. Uh, for, for quite some time now. If anybody says that the only people that have funnels are, are you know, B2C and e-commerce, I think that person is, is incorrect. Uh, just because a B2B doesn't necessarily have a true e-commerce funnel doesn't necessarily mean that there's still no funnel. 
from where someone's going from where they go to an Eloqua landing page to maybe the home page to a product page all the way to lead capture or to the next sales trigger. That is a journey and that is a funnel and you need to be able to figure out what's going on there. Predictive analytics, simply is what I just shared with you on the prior slide, lead capture, application testing, and then of course we have propensity testing. So we wanna do all of that within a tool like Maximizer to ensure that we're actually getting the most ROI from Eloqua. Now, another thing that we wanna do is we want to make sure that now that we have someone in our platform and that we recognize who they are as a known visitor, we want to now take the next step. So we have a known visitor, we're going to send them a targeted email offer, and we're going to have them arrive to a, a, a landing page or a website, an local landing page, website, whatever you guys prefer. So what are some of the things that we can then do? Well, we want to test the different content within an email. Now, while we can't necessarily test the specific email just yet, we, if you're sending out three different types of creative, three different types of offers, we want to then track, okay, well, let's make sure that we have consistent site messaging for each one of those. So obviously consistent site messaging, smiley face, if that's not good, frowny face. We want to be able to test user journeys. Do we send someone to a product page and then to um, a schedule an appointment or do we want to have them go to a schedule an appointment first? Let's test that. Understanding what are the current conversion milestones? What are those new triggers within Eloqua? And should we be changing them? Are these the right ones? How do we validate them? Um, marketing placements. Understanding that, you know, when you're in a true funnel, if we want someone to get in and get out as quickly as possible, should we be marketing them along the way in the funnel? Do we market them beforehand? These are things that you wanna test. And of course, we wanna make sure that we're sending the most relevant targeting and offers. So quickly, what I'm going to do now is show you one of those use cases, and I'm just gonna slide this over. And this right here is our uh, dummy site that is, again, Ron said, this is just a demo site um, that, you know, we help to, to get some of these tools up and running and to help show you what it would look like. So what you're seeing here is the Olympic Mountain Corporation, OMC. And you'll notice that on their homepage, two things are popping up. The first one is this is our maximizer widget, our QA tool. And the other thing I'd like to point out to you is the fact that our request for quote, which is one of our big KPIs, is located at the bottom of the page that does require a good amount of scroll. So here, we've already gone in and we've already built a very simple test. But in order to actually see that test before it goes live, if you will, we want to be able to make sure that we can look at all different aspects of this test. So what we're going to be able to do in one minute is I'm going to be able to show you a couple of different things. The first thing is we're going to now take this request for quote and we're going to now move it so it's a little bit more predominantly high up on the page. So we're now in our de default. I'm now going to show you our variant. We're going to quickly reload the page. And you'll now notice that the place that we just had it in is no longer there and it is now located in our hero banner. So again, very simple to do. This is all done within the WYSIWYG editor from taking our lead capture form and putting it to the top of the page. Now, one of the other really interesting things about this is this, this can be done on an Eloqua landing page. This could be done within the website. It could be done however you'd like it to be. But one of the interesting things here is if you look, and we're gonna show you this in a couple of slides, is you know the ability to leverage first party, third party data, out of the box data. You know, not every company has this wealth of data or the, or the ability to purchase third party data. So what you wanna look at, just to show you all the things that Maximizer is capturing, is we have some things if they're in market, their last search, so these could be things that you could be leveraging for uh, streams. But now it's picking up my current city where I'm at right now, my metro area, my zip code, what browser I'm in, what type of device I'm using, who my ISP is, my screen resolution, local day parts, time, my refer, where I came from. Um, and one of the most interesting things here on the bottom is it's capturing weather. Maximizer allows for you to optimize for specific weather conditions, right? So if we know that uh, when it's snowing out, you need to show a specific type of message uh, versus if it's raining or versus if you have a hurricane and you need to get certain prep and ready to go, these are definitely things that you can do. So case in point, if you happen to have a business that is, um, 
you know, experiencing a lot of snow, you can then create a program that says, oh, all of our operations are currently busy due to the blizzard, due to the snow. Here is a way for you to, um, you know, reach us via email or call us or chat with us. So we're collecting a lot of data, but the other thing that this also collects is the ability to, to have these actions. So just for, you know, purpose sake, you know, we don't have it set up so that way, you know, you would have to fill everything out. But in the real world, we would make sure that you could successfully submit a, a quote. Let's just click it. Gonna let it refresh in a minute. And now you'll see that we just captured a quote or request for quote click, even though we know the fields are, are required. So again, when we were doing this uh, for clients, we're gonna make sure that all the information is currently done and it's actually done on page load versus a click. And you'll notice that we actually added an attribute, which is the request for quote was done uh, over here in the marquee. Um, and so on and so forth. So we have the ability to, you know, you'll see how it changes based off of where you're clicking and all that fun stuff. Once you're done with that, you now want to take a look at the reporting. The reporting, that's the beauty of Maximizer. If you aren't, um, if you can't rationalize, if you can't quantify everything you've done, there's no point to do what you've done. So here is a is just an example, it's just some dummy data of some of the reporting that you can get out right out of the box with Maximizer. So the first thing is you'll be able to see how your funnel operates. So I don't care again if it's an e-commerce funnel or if it is a lead capture from an email to where they actually go to the next step, we can target and, and track all of it. You have the ability to do a number of different actions that you are most in, that are more, most important to your business, excuse me. So you'll be able to see everything from the conversion rates here. This is all for people who make a purchase confirmation to your uplift, your confidence. And what's also nice is that we can capture revenue and quote unquote average order value. So what exactly do those mean in terms of B2B land? Well, for average order value, if you were to make a purchase, it would be how much you spent on that purchase. But for lead capture, you're not necessarily making any sort of purchase. So what we would say is, okay, well, every lead capture is worth $500 to us. So we know that every single time your AOV would be $500, depending on what action they're taking. And then we would just multiply that out by how much revenue each thing is making and you can then put it right into the tool. So again, this is where everything is. It's very self-intuitive. Uh, Self-serve features are great. Uh, and a lot of fun things that you can play with in the filters, the locations, your, you know, your weather, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. So that's really what you wanna look at at Maximizer in a nutshell. Now, to, to finish everything off, we're now going to talk about, well, what does it look like when you have Eloqua, Infinity, and Maximizer? What does a use case look like for all three of those products to work together? So again, just to sort of reiterate again, what Ron was speaking to towards the beginning is you want to start to think about how do we optimize our campaigns, right? So we want to leverage uh, infinity here for real-time decision that you know that streams is some of the most powerful things out there because you have the ability to capture things in real time that's key you don't want stale data uh, we want to leverage those insights for cross-channel activation right so we want to be able to leverage what we see in the streams within maximizer to trigger a specific type of user experience and in Eloqua to trigger some specific type of user messaging with an email we also then, has, as Ron alluded to in the beginning, there's also the notion of having the analytics, having that single point, so that way you can actually then see what's going on on your website in real time. So let's take a, a quick look at this use case that talks about Eloqua, Maxi, and Infinity. The first thing I wanna point out before we get started here is in the top right corner, that turquoise box, if you will, or gray box. The most important thing here is that we can leverage and ingest any type of data. So anything from first party out of the box data to, uh, you know, if you were to purchase anything from the Oracle Data Cloud in Blue Kai, you have the third party data. So what we know for this example is that we know these are existing customers. We have that's first party. We know what their Eloqua ID is, again, first party. And we know that these happen to be in market for something. So that's going to be third party data. So a user arrives to the website that we've given them information to, we start noticing that they're interested in product A, whatever that is on your website. 
So what are we going to do? Knowing that they are engaging on the website with this particular content, we can leverage, say, Infinity Streams to trigger Maximizer to show a specific message, an offer, uh, some sort of a pop-up, however you want to do it, and that's why we work with you to make sure that your strategy is sound, we're going to put something in their face that's all about product day. And guess what? We're also going to trigger in Eloqua an email to this individual because we know they just looked at product day, so therefore we're going to send them an email as a follow-up maybe in about 24 hours about product day or maybe it's going to be within an hour, however you want it to be. But wait. The user isn't looking in product A anymore. Now the user is really engaging with product B. But we've already triggered that email to go out in Eloqua. So what do we do now? Well, we obviously do not want to send someone information that's going to be irrelevant. It's going to be stale, something that they're not going to care about. You know, I'm sure everybody within the past 24 to 48 hours have gotten emails from your favorite brands about Cyber Monday, Black Friday, how it's not Cyber Monday anymore, it's now Cyber Week, how it's being extended. Again, it's all irrelevant content, but what if we had the ability to say, okay, well, instead of sending them A, what if we were to send them something about product B? Now what we would do is we could leverage Infinity and Maximizer again to say, okay, well, hey, we know that actually they don't like A, they're in the market for B, therefore we're going to take information on the website, display, market, everything with Maximizer for product B, and then we're actually going to trigger that email in Eloqua to go from product A to product B. That is the beauty of Maxi, Infinity, and Eloqua, is real-time optimization across mediums from web to email and then back again to web. So really, really powerful things. And these are things that, again, the folks here at DevGuru and R1 have been doing for, for quite some time. And just to finish up, one of the other nice features uh, about it is actually once you have Maximizer and Infinity, you have the ability then to actually start using um, heat mapping. So you'll be able to compare what the heat mapping looks like, not only for your default experience, which you're seeing now, but you'd be able to then actually compare it to the uh, Olympic Mountain Corporation, any sort of test variant that we've made. And again, it's pretty powerful stuff that you'll be able to see this. So again, we can visually, visually overlay this on the web. Uh, you'll be able to see infinity captures. Everything's done in real time with the streams. And then you have the ability to really filter everything out uh, with some of the maximizer filters, which I showed you uh, during the demo. So in wrapping up, uh, you know, we know that we tried to keep this to uh, less than an hour. So uh, I think we, we've mission accomplished on that one. But uh, I'd like to really thank you on behalf of, of myself and Ron for, for joining today. Uh, we definitely hope you enjoyed the presentation and see the value of, of how in B2B land, as I like to call it, you can leverage real-time optimization, you can leverage marketing automation and conversion rate optimization to really grow your business and create a powerful uh, sales journey, sales program that's really all powered by a lot of the platforms with that Oracle has. So, uh, you know, definitely wish you all a very happy holidays. If you have any questions for myself uh, and Ron, our emails are on the bottom. And if that's and, it, uh, turn it back yeah. over. Oh, sorry. Go for it, Ron. No, I was going to say, and, and Mike, I'm not sure. I don't, do we have any questions at all that came in on the chat before we kind of wrap up? Or? No, we did not get any questions on the chat. Uh, I, I'm actually going to go unmute all for anybody that wants to ask a question before we wrap up here. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that both Michael and I had is, you know, there are so many different use cases we could pluck out and show. We only highlighted a couple, so I'm sure there are some questions on other things that you can uh, use the tools for, but happy to answer any questions if there are any. Yeah, so everybody should be unmuted at this point. No questions? And if there's no questions, that just means Michael and I did just such a wonderful job, right? I mean, we answered everything. <laughs> Yeah, right I would like to, to thank you, Michael and Rob, <laughs> for doing uh, this for our, our teams today, and I appreciate it. And we will wrap this up. Thanks thank again, everyone. Appreciate Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, guys.